Hello and welcome to our video on consumer and producer surplus, where we'll be thinking about who stands to gain whenever a purchase is made. There are two sides to every transaction, the consumer, who wants the lowest price possible, and the producer, who wants to sell at the highest price they can get away with. Whenever a price is agreed on, there will usually be some element of surplus for both the consumer and the producer. So let's start out by defining consumer surplus. It's the difference between the price that consumers are willing and able to pay for a product or service and the price they actually end up paying. If you ever tried to barter for anything, you'll have tried to maximise your consumer surplus. You know in your head what you'd have been willing to pay, but the less you can get the item for, the happier you'll be. A good way to think about this is to break down the market into its individual consumers and see how much each one would have been willing to pay for a certain good. Imagine this is a demand curve for cinema tickets to see a new film. Remember that it's the summation of all the individual's demand curve in the market. So what it shows is that a fraction of consumers would be willing to pay £20 for a ticket. When the new James Bond film comes out, there'd be some really big fans who would go if the price was this high, but most would probably give it a miss. As the price comes down, let's say to £5, more and more consumers are kind of priced into the market and the quantity of tickets demanded will be really high. In an ideal world for the cinema, they'd charge each person the exact price they're willing to pay for a ticket. But imagine how hard it would be for them to do this, other than asking people at the door how much they'd be willing to pay and hoping for a truthful answer, it's pretty much impossible. So this means that the market price has to be set, let's say £10 in our example here, and there are some people for whom this will be too expensive who will drop out of the market. But there are others who will be willing to pay more, and this creates the consumer surplus. So we can show that the total consumer surplus for a product is the area between the demand curve and the market price. An important skill is being able to show on a diagram how a change in the price of a good affects consumer surplus. Assuming consumer surplus is initially shown by the area of the purple triangle outlined by points A, B and C, an increase in price will decrease consumer surplus and it will now just be the triangle bounded by points A, D and E. If there was a decrease in price, consumer surplus rises and will be shown by the whole area A, G, F. So as price goes up, consumers have to pay more and this eats into their surplus. But as price falls, they gain more surplus. OK, so while consumers will be trying to obtain the lowest price they can in order to maximise their consumer surplus, producers will be busy trying to charge the highest price possible. In other words, they are trying to maximise their producer surplus. The definition of this is the difference between the price received by the producer and the price they would have been willing to accept. And we can show this on a diagram as well. With consumer surplus, the lower the price, the more consumers enter the market, but with producer surplus, it will be the opposite. So at £5, not many cinemas would be willing or able to show films at such low prices. It just wouldn't be very profitable for them. But as price rises, increasing numbers of cinemas are tempted into supplying more and more of the service. In fact, nearly all cinemas would be willing and able to do viewings at £20. But we already know that not many people can afford such an expensive ticket, so we get to the market price of £10. Very much like consumer surplus, the area of producer surplus is shown by the area between the market price and this time the supply curve. And again, we'd need to be able to show the impact of price changes on producer surplus. The producer surplus here is initially shown by the area of the triangle ABC at price B. A price increase to D means the area of the producer surplus increases, growing to the full area ADE. A price decrease to F means that the area of producer surplus shrinks and now only occupies the area AFG. So the impact of the price changes will be the complete opposite to consumer surplus. This time as prices rise, producer surplus rises, and when prices fall, their surplus falls with it. Both producer and consumer surplus can be seen on the same diagram here. You can see how any price change which brings about an increase in one of the areas will decrease the other one. This is the essence of consumer and producer surplus. Consumers want as low price as possible, while producers want as high a price as they can get away with. In reality, the market price will fall somewhere in between, leaving producers and consumers with some surplus each. 
So in summary of this video, we've defined consumer surplus as the difference between what consumers are willing and able to pay and the price they actually pay. We've shown that it appears on the demand curve as the area between the curve and the market price. Then we concluded that consumer surplus decreases when price increases. For producer surplus, the definition was the difference between what producers are willing and able to accept and the price they actually sell for. We saw it on the supply curve as the area between the curve and the market price and said that it increases when price increases. Finally, we saw how whenever there's a price change, higher or lower, one of the surpluses will increase while the other one decreases.